Welcome to our week of celebrations. Thanks for joining us to celebrate the impact of involvement during change. Each year we hold our Involvement Celebration Day to showcase how we work in partnership with service users and carers to enhance the services that we deliver, but also, more importantly, to thank service users, patients, carers, families and volunteers for supporting us to grow as an organisation. This year is a little bit different as you can imagine, but we were determined to triumph over adversity and continue our celebrations but in a slightly different way. We'll be seeing some short videos every day over the course of this week, focusing on some of the priority areas for our organisation. Then on Friday, we'll be holding the Service User and Care of Involvement Awards, which is a fantastic way to end our week of celebrations. During day one, we'll be hearing from Neil Carr and Liz Lockett, and then from Jackie Small and Mike Brooks, who are co-chairing the event during this week. We'll also be sharing some of the ways that we listen to our service users and carers and how we work together to make our services the best they can be for everyone. So firstly, I'd like to hand over to Neil Carr. In the calendar of the Trust, there's nothing more important than the service users, carers and celebration week. And I am so sorry that we can't hold it and bring us all together as we would normally do. But you know, because of COVID-19, that's not been possible. I apologise to you and at the earliest opportunity, we will come together to celebrate the contribution that our patients, our clients, our carers and our volunteers make to the richness of this organisation. In the meantime, I want to say a massive thank you to everyone who has contributed to the patient experience, to the patient journey. It's you and the staff together that make a real difference. And that's what we need to celebrate. Those individuals that have gone in the extra mile to really ensure that we meet not only the biological, the psychological and social needs of our patients, but those spiritual needs, those needs that are enriched by being very clear, what makes you you? What makes me me? How can we build on that together? How can we create the right oasis? And that's what our service users, our carers, our volunteers do. And that's what we're here to celebrate. So thank you for all of your efforts. Next, I'd like to welcome Jackie Small, who's our non-executive director. Hello and welcome to Service User and Carer Involvement Week. I'm Jackie Small and the Non-Executive Director Lead for Service User and Carer Involvement and Co-Chair for Service User and Carer Involvement Week, along with Mike Brooks. I'd like to offer a warm welcome to Mike as Co-Chair who has been involved in co-producing the Celebration Week events. Mike uses our MSK services at the Hayward Hospital and is a lay member of the Hayward Foundation. Mike's also working on a number of projects with MSK services and with Keele University. As a non-executive director and board member, I work alongside other non-exec directors to act in the best interests of patients and the public by way of listening to the views of and concerns of patients and staff. Also as part of that role, we're responsible for holding the board to account challenging decisions and outcomes. Also working with the board to formulate strategy by bringing an independent and external perspective to that. A key part of the role also involves seeking assurance that we use resources to maintain a sustainable and effective organisation. In addition to that, as non-executive directors, we work actively to support and promote a healthy culture within MPFT. As a non-executive director lead for service user and care involvement, my role is to champion behaviours and values to ensure that services are responsive to the people using them and provide the opportunity for the trust to learn from their experience. Also, my role is to ensure that staff who provide services listen to and respond to their client group as part of good practice and that they co-produce with patients and service users and their carers and enable the organisation to learn from people's experiences and knowledge and 
ensure that services meet their needs. Patient experience and involvement is an extremely important and valuable resource to us at MPFT. Our focus is to listen to our service users, their families and their carers, and to act upon their feedback to learn lessons, improve and sustain change. Quality, safety and experience is a priority. Our quality framework outlines that providing high quality health and social care services is everyone's responsibility and an integral part of our values and behaviours to support our mission. Our mission is to ensure that where appropriate, patients with their families and carers are involved in and consulted on all decisions about their care and treatment. At MPFT, we actively encourage feedback from the public, patients and staff and welcome it and use it to improve our services. People who use our service and their carers are at the heart of everything that we do. By using their experiences, enthusiasm and ideas, we can bring a completely new point of view to the planning and delivery of services here at MPFT. Welcome to Service User and Carer Involvement Celebration Week. Now I'd like to welcome Mike Brooks, who's our co-chair for the celebrations for this week. Good morning and welcome to the 2020 Service Users and Carers Celebration event. Held this year in a rather unusual manner in that we are all linking through the virtual world of video links. So who am I? Well, I'm Mike Brooks. I am a service user of the MPFT Rheumatology and Musculoskeletal Services, predominantly at the Haywood Hospital up in Burslem. Now I left university in 1970 and pursued a scientific career. But for the last 15 years of my working life, I was the owner and managing director of a leadership and management development and training company. But 15 years ago, I was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis, which was a bit of a body blow and life changed considerably. But after attending the Haywood as a patient for well, maybe six or seven years, life changed again and for the better because I was invited to join the Haywood Foundation Committee and my position as a lay member of that committee led to a number of tremendous opportunities for patient involvement. For instance, Keele University's Research User Group and their Lay Involvement in Knowledge Mobilisation Group, all via the Impact Accelerator Unit at Keele, has offered even more opportunities as time unfolded. I've worked very closely with Kay Stevenson, the uh, consultant physiotherapist at the Haywood, and with her musculoskeletal team and that in itself has opened lots of involvement doors. As an example, the Moving Forward project, which is a physiotherapy and well-being study to ensure that best research evidence is embedded into practice, is a huge piece of work and very exciting. I'm currently the co-chair, along with Jane Hall, of the Studies Review Committee and a member of the community of practice. Other studies, of which there are many, have involved studies relating to the COVID-19 impact on people and services. For instance, I've been looking with another team at using uh, virtual appointment opportunities for consultations and so forth. Uh, another uh, event was to look at the impact that COVID's had on the older generation, my generation, for managing pain during the difficult times of lockdown and social distancing, etc, etc. And I've been honoured throughout this entire period since, well, maybe 10 years now, to be part of the patient and public 
involvement and engagement fraternity. Within MPFT, for instance, I've been invited to sit on two interview panels for two very high ranking positions. I've joined a team of professionals, medical professionals, and been part of a team that's conducted peer reviews at two West Midland hospitals. Fairly recently, I was invited to um, comment and help in some way with the MPFT food and hydration strategy. And all these things that have been local through the Haywood, through MPFT, through Keel, has led to even more opportunities opening up for me. As a lay contributor to the ARC West Midlands group, the Applied Research Collaboration West Midlands, which is a collaboration between Keel, Warwick and uh, Birmingham universities, has led me to be part of a team that's looking and, and looking at how long term illnesses are being managed, long term conditions are being managed one way or another, either by the individual, by the medical world, etc, etc. Another far reaching piece of work to be involved with. Another collaboration which has come out of that is that I'm now a co-applicant with clinicians of, of all disciplines between Nottingham University and Keele University. And I've been the co-applicant now for an NIHR grant application. So the, the, the opportunities are huge. The list goes on. So you might ask, why do I get involved in all this? Well, it's possibly because it stimulates my little grey cells and it keeps me engaged in an area of work that interested me all those years ago in research and development. But away from the cerebral activities, I'm physically involved with my wife and I of uh, looking after our allotment, which is around 320 square meters of, of, of area. And we're almost self-sufficient in fruit and vegetables, which is giving me lots and lots of physical activity, but it's also good for the mental stimulation as well. I can be lost in my thoughts and come back physically tired, mentally drained, but, but really on top of my game. Rugby union is another passion of mine, season ticket holder at Sale Sharks, where I can actually give vent to my pent up feelings when I know that the referees got it wrong, as they always seem to do. But seriously, my physical and mental health, my emotional well-being is, is paramount. And by being involved and engaged either with MPFT or the Impact Accelerator Unit at Keel has really kept me on an even keel, especially through these last few months of, of, of difficulty. What I would say is if you're inquisitive or like me, as some would say, nosy, try and get involved with the involvement and engagement team at uh, MPFT, for instance, there's loads and loads of opportunities coming your way potentially all the time. Keele University's IAU as well. It's, it's an extremely important feature for me to be into my 70s now, but still learning a lot and still hopefully contributing something as a lay contributor to many, many projects. That's why I do it. I'd like to not exactly put something back in, but I'm taking a lot out, not just from a medical treatment perspective, medical management perspective, but also understanding more. My education has increased more as to how important research is and getting research evidence into practice. And the best way that can happen is for members of the public, carers, service users to get involved as much as they can. If you've got a few hours to spare, I would recommend it. 
it's 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 made a, a heck of a difference to me to be involved with Kay and her team, with Fiona and her team, with Nikki Evans at Keel and her team. Everybody that's involved has made my life really an exciting departure from the COVID problems of, of late, which we've all suffered from. So what is PPI? E. Well, patient and public involvement and engagement. But for me, PPIE is also a message. PPIE, please participate. It's exciting. Enjoy the rest of the event. There's a lots of lots of very interesting and important features coming up over the next few days. And I hope you enjoy what you see and listen to. And if you get as much enjoyment out of it as I've got out of being part and parcel of the involvement and engagement squad throughout the West Midlands, if you get as much enjoyment as me, we're all on a pretty good upward trajectory. Thanks a lot. Bye bye. Thank you for supporting us with this event. It's great to hear from you all. I'd like to start by talking about the priorities for involvement and experience. These priorities ensure that we're listening to what people are telling us about their experience of using our services and what matters to them, maximising the outcomes of working together to ensure this benefits all concerned, providing information and communicating plans so that people who use our services are better able to understand the decisions affecting their care and understanding the carer perspective, hearing in their own words how things can be improved. So we will focus our celebrations today on the first of our priorities, which is around positive experience of care. I'd like to hand over firstly to Louise, who's one of our involvement facilitators, to talk about the Mystery Shopper programme, which is one of the ways that we gather feedback about our services. Hi, my name's Louise. I'm the Involvement Facilitator for Specialist Care Group and Children and Families Care Group. I'm also the lead for our Mystery Shopper programme, which is what I'm going to talk briefly about today. So a Mystery Shopper programme is a way of us gaining real-time feedback for our services. It's a little bit different from the surveys that you may have been asked to complete before. We ask very general questions um, around the environment. So I know at the moment our services are having to work a little bit differently, so you may not have been able to get on site. Um, but we would ask about access to the building, signage. A lot of our sites are quite large um, and they are can be difficult to, to navigate around, especially if you haven't been before. So we want to know where if everything's clearly signposted, whether it's easy to find your way around. So we also ask about the waiting rooms. Is it comfortable? Is it inviting? Is it clean? Is it tidy? Does anything need updating? Um, the posters or leaflets that are on display, are they appropriate? Are they up to date? We also want to know about any interaction that you've had with the trust, whether that be receiving a letter in the post, was all of the information clear and concise? Was it easy to read and easy to understand? If you've had a telephone call to either book an appointment, change an appointment, get test results, how helpful was the member of staff on the phone? Again, was the information clear and concise? We also want to know about staff attitude. Was there a particular member of staff or a particular team that were really helpful that we can pass on a compliment to? Mystery shopping isn't all about the negative. We want to hear about the positive too, especially at the moment. I think everybody is in need of a boost. So it's really good to hear um, and be able to pass on compliments to specific team members. So mystery shopping is all completely anonymous. If you sign up to be a mystery shopper, you will receive a unique, unique ID code, which is stored on a secure database that only the involvement team have access to. So all of your information will be held securely. If you don't want to sign up to, to be a mystery shopper, that's absolutely fine. You can leave feedback as and when you feel is necessary. If you feel that, feel that there's something that needs improvement, improving, no matter how big, how small, obviously you are our eyes and ears when it comes to feedback and we won't be able to make the improvements without you. Um, it's very difficult as a, such a large trust for people to be able to get out to every single site that we have. Um, so it's very important 
that you, the service user, patient or carer, um, gives us feedback on, on all of those places. So if you would like to sign up or if you'd like to leave us feedback, you can get in touch by email in, emailing involvement at mpft.nhs.uk. Thank you. Thank you, Louise. Next, I'd like to hand over to Sunita Roberts, who's one of our Pals and Experience facilitators, who will be talking about the role of Pals and Experience in service improvements. Hello, and welcome to the Pals and Experience presentation. Today, I would like to tell you a little about what we do. Our role in Pals is to support service users and carers to resolve issues and share good practice. We do this by listening to concerns and advise how we are able to help. We provide information and on-the-spot help to service users and carers to resolve concerns promptly. We will take measures to ensure that where appropriate policies and working practices are amended so that the issues do not arise again. We welcome positive feedback which we log and share with the teams. Patient care is at the heart of what we do and we are committed to improving the experience of our service users and carers. As part of our PALS and Experience team, we also capture service user and carer feedback from patient surveys. We develop surveys along with our clinical teams and support them to ensure people have the opportunity to provide feedback. We support the care groups to identify themes and trends and involve service users and carers in improvements by the involvement team. Our team also ask our service users and carers if they would like to participate in a patient story, following feedback from PALS concerns, compliments and experience surveys. If you would like more information on PALS, please contact us on our free phone 0800 783 2865. Alternatively, you can email us at palsandexperience at mpft.nhs.uk. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this presentation. Thank you, Sunita. We'll now hear a poem from Jeanette about embracing the six C's in 0 to 19 services. Embracing the six C's within the 0 to 19 year service. An opportunity now to focus, to think deeply resulting in thus. How will this link, you may ask? Listen now, as will not entail a task. Care, compassion and competence. Let us be sure that there is no recompense. Communication, courage and commitment. Important and not only to be a figment. Being involved in representing our service provision requires time and energy when making a decision. The integral gifts of care and compassion are a need. Be assured service users will recognise the deed. Competence requires efficiency and effectiveness. Continual feedback from service users will ensure success. Communication is the impartation of exchange of views, an issue that may suddenly be the latest news. Service users will speak, write or use their non-verbal to express. Analyse carefully in order to progress. Courage and commitment are essential for plans to take place. Engage with service users, which will include time and pace. Leadership, ownership and partnership are necessary factors. They endorse the infrastructure to create positive reactors. A team and a community are able to contribute. Require our service and our service users to achieve the absolute. That was a fantastic poem, Jeanette. Thank you for sharing that with us. Next, I'd like to hand over to Roz, who's one of our involvement facilitators, who's going to be talking about a recent project for Shropshire, Telford and Reakin Care Group around gaining feedback from service users and carers about their experiences during COVID and how they may wish to engage in the future. Hi, for those who don't know me, I'm Roz and I'm the involvement facilitator for the Shropshire, Telford and Reakin Care Group. I am here today to talk to you about a project that I've been lucky enough to be a part of this year. As our celebration week theme is celebrating the impact of involvement through change and today specifically we are looking at the positive experience of care, 
I wanted to reflect on how these things can be brought together by involving our service users and carers and seeking real feedback to help guide us when developing new ways of working. This brings me on to a project that Shropshire and Telford and Reakin Care Group colleagues and myself in the involvement team launched as we approached the end of the three month lockdown period. This being the COVID-19 survey on service delivery during challenging times. This project initially started as a conversation between staff reflecting on the potential impacts for our service users, both positive and negative, of us having to introduce new ways of supporting service users whilst maintaining that important social distance. In response to COVID-19 restrictions, the organisation very quickly rolled out one consultation for our service users to access their appointments via online video. We wanted to better understand how this service had been received and where other methods of contact such as telephone appointment and face-to-face -face, were still important to have available when required. We wanted to keep the balance of safe social distancing while ensuring our services are still being accessed by those in need. With this in mind, we rolled out the survey as we moved forward to a more long-term plan for safely delivering care together. Our survey aimed to ensure that all service users and carers were still able to access support, both during the lockdown period and beyond. We also wanted to find out whether the way our support was being delivered as was being well received and that our service users still felt supported in the same way they did prior to COVID-19, albeit now at that safe social distance. We also wanted to give hope and acknowledge that some of the new ways of working could indeed have in enabled more service users to feel able to reach out and link in with services without that pressure of travelling to appointments, being able to access support from their own home environment. We wanted to consider every aspect of service delivery, the good, the bad and the ugly. We were keen to ensure that this wasn't just a data collecting exercise and wanted to drill down further into the feedback received. We wanted to chat to our service users and understand their needs and concerns and maybe even understand their compliments more fully. We sought permissions from a number of service users who had responded to our survey to have conversations with them. From these conversations, we could get a real feel for the themes coming through from the survey results and how we could work together to get things right as we started to emerge from lockdown into a new way of running our services. From running the surveys in this way and making it interactive with conversations with our service users, we are much better able to understand how to plan for future delivery of care. We hope that this way of working collaboratively with service users and carers enables us to design the best possible services that are truly accessible for all. The involvement approach used in this project is key when developing services as we can never get service delivery right without conversations and input from those who've experienced the service. Their experiences should always direct us in how we develop and move forward, particularly in times of change. Working together with our service users and carers in this way often creates a new direction of travel in a project. It invokes a real enthusiasm for a positive change. I hope that from giving you this overview of how this project worked during the crisis, it will encourage more staff to better engage with our service users and carers when developing services and encourage the capture of real and valuable feedback, which is well thought out with outcomes for improvement for our service users and carers experience at the forefront throughout. I hope that this also encourages our service users and carers to join us in registering for involvement activities in the future and hopefully get involved in similar pieces of work. We hope that by sharing this work with you, it demonstrates that providing your feedback really does inform us and brings about very real and positive impacts that benefit all. I hope that this video has been helpful to you, as well as helping you to get to know me, Ros, one of the four involvement facilitators for the Trust. If you have any queries or wish to register for involvement, 
please, please don't hesitate to contact us. You can contact us by email involvement at mpft.nhs.uk. Thank you. Thank you, Ross. I'd like to speak briefly about the role of peer support workers within our organisation. Peer support workers are powerful recovery role models who have lived experience of using services and actively use those experiences as a way to support others whilst continuing along their own recovery journey. Peers bring a unique element to the service through equal and reciprocal relationships they provide hope the hope that moving forward is possible. They also hold belief that recovery is possible and that each individual has the right to this. Peers are not simply just sharing experiences, they are role modelling the qualities that people possess and working with people and themselves to develop ways of using them at a time when those qualities are perhaps the most difficult to engage. Having peer support workers within the workforce is about living the Trust's core values and fully adopting a recovery focused orientation. Strengthening peer support is a priority for the organisation and we already have a number of peer support workers across the Trust in our adult mental health services and in our specialist services such as eating disorders, forensic services, inclusion services and perinatal mental health. If you'd like to know more about peer support workers, please contact the involvement team on involvement at mpft.nhs.uk. Hi there, my name's Fiona Mills and I would like to tell you about my story of recovery from an inpatient to a peer support worker employed by the Trust. So back in 2019 in the at the end of August, I was discharged from Roxham Ward at St George's. Wasn't sure what I was going to do with myself, but this time, compared to being discharged from other times, I knew that I felt more confident in myself and I felt that the drugs were helping me so much to calm myself and to stabilise my mood so that I could think in a more logical way and to not have hallucinations. I wasn't sure what to do in the first couple of months as the medication side effects meant I was very sleepy for a while. But at the end of September I had seen a poster about the Trust wanting service users and carers' views on what to do with the George Bryan Centre site after the fire uh, had occurred, destroying the site. I thought I'd better go because I had experiences of both St George's and George Bryan Centre. When I got to my local meeting, I actually realised there and then that I had been the only one there with experiences of both as a patient and I actually poured my heart out and told people my story and told people what I thought should happen with the site. Um, people were very impressed with what I had said and a lady called Fiona Moore had come up to me afterwards and said we'd like to hear more from you would you like to sign up to involvement activities now my first question was what's involvement activities I mean I had had been in services for a while but I had never heard of them so um, Fiona had given me a leaflet and I read through the leaflet and explains all the stuff you can do with involvement and I signed up there and then the first 
thing I did that was big for involvement was to go to one of their service users and carers meetings which is very good because you meet up with the different people from different services and you talk about what is good and bad within those services and how you can help to improve those services which is so crucial um, because whether your experiences are good or bad the trust needs to know and I would ask anyone who has experiences good or bad to let the trust know then in December 2019 I was asked could I do the um, service user story for the council of governors which help to drive the trust forward I said yes I would unfortunately typical December days um, my train was very late and uh, I nearly missed mating but I did get there when I turned up um, there was a lot of people there from different services not just mental health but also from different places you got people from Stoke people from Shropshire people from Staffordshire and people who wouldn't usually listen to a mental health story but they did listen to mine and the most uplifting thing was after my speech people not only clapped but people came and shook my hand and said thank you that to me was the most singlest proudest moment of my life because I couldn't believe people were listening to me. So I vouched on and I moved on. January I did completed a another service users meeting, uh, this time more closer to me, which was good. But I also started to help out with leaflets, proofreading them for the trust and making sure they was clear for all service users to use also involvement emails out to you different job roles which have a degree of need um, to be either a service user or past service user or a care of someone who uses those services and in February one such email popped up for me and it was for the step on service which is the employment specialist service for people with mental health issues to use uh, in order to gain employment within Staffordshire I knew straight away this would be the job for me so I spent a good three hours filling out the form on NHS jobs and I sent it and I waited and waited but then Covid hit and before just before lockdown I got a message saying unfortunately at the moment due to Covid restrictions and um, we aren't able to offer the job up yet but please keep in touch as we may be able to offer the job in the future and to be honest when lockdown happened I was scared for me it was the unknown how long we was going to be in lockdown for how long can it be before we get along our lives back together and how long will it be before I can find bread on the shelves <laughs> I honestly thought at the beginning of lockdown in March I thought I was going to go into crisis not having the certainties of life 
but also knowing that this virus could kill anyone. And to be honest, for the first few weeks, it was touch and go. But actually, I found instead, I thrived. I completed um, dementia courses online and I got myself ready for work. I learned to organise my day and to keep to a routine, but also to keep my spirits up. I did the things that I knew helped to keep my spirits up, like having a shower, like getting yourself to bed um, at a good time and having a good night's rest, making sure that you keep your house and your garden or whatever outside space you have tidy but also just to help other people so I volunteered to be a befriender for uh, for a outside company and did that until September towards the end of May I got uh, end of April I got an email from NHS jobs clicked it would you like to be interviewed for the job I had applied in February yes please I got to that interview and unlike other interviews where you're nervous as hell yes I was nervous but at the same time, I knew this job is for me. I've got to get this job if above anything else because I knew it fit me so well. After that interview, I knew that the interview had gone well and I knew it was touch and go as to whether I'd get the job. And I did. I got the job, um, went through all the usual checks and references etc and I started on the 1st of August 2020 and it's been amazing. If you think you've recovered, let me tell you now, you haven't recovered fully in my eyes anyway until you have found some kind of paid work or some kind of thing that fills your day because having paid work means somebody trusts you enough to get paid somebody thinks your skills are worth enough to get paid and it's amazing I am so proud of myself but I'm also proud of the people who helped me. It wasn't just the trust that helped me. Um, there were lots and lots of professionals and charitable organisations, as well as the, the usual public and private organisations. And they all had a hand in making me better. But for Midlands Partnership, and for my CPN, who has now turned into my colleague, they helped me push forward and to get rid of those barriers so that I can enter work. And I have now flourished through work. And I just want to say a big thank you because I never thought in a million years I would ever be worth being in work and now I feel that my mental illness is not just my mental illness it's a part of me now I'm not the definition of my mental illness anymore and actually you can move on from a mental health crisis I also want to say that anyone who is struggling physically or mentally because of this lockdown, please, 
please just remember you are doing well by surviving every day by getting up by doing those things don't compare yourself to others if you haven't done amazing great things do you know what that's okay we are all suffering in this crisis in one way or the other even if people won't say so and sometimes the not knowing is the worst but do things you can do and don't necessarily worry about the things you can't do today because you will be able to do them one day it's just that you haven't found that one day yet <laughs> but thank you very much for listening we're now going to share a video with you about the volunteer program in inclusion who have a strong peer support worker program within their services so i'd like to hand over to tony burkett and adam i'm the volunteer coordinator and the service user rep lead for the isle of wight inclusion hub um, today i'm with adam phelan who is one of our tier three volunteer recovery workers hello adam Hello Tony. Thank you for joining us today to support us with this course. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about your volunteering Adam. Um, what, what made you sort of interested in the programme and what do you enjoy about your volunteering with Inclusion Isle of Wight? Well I, I came into um, the service about a year ago and what was what, what attracted me to actually volunteering was the the, the other the other people really everybody who has all, all the staff and not all the staff a lot of the staff have gone through a, a volunteering program and like myself have been been a service user went through a volunteering program and then got a got a paid job out of it my life was missing something um, and I, I really sort of needed that um, that gratification that, that that you all get. So I wanted to, to volunteer, basically. <laughs> I wanted to be able to give something back. I wanted to get well for myself, and then make other people well also. And it seems like a quite a, quite a simple, um, simple route. I enjoy being part of a team, being, feel, being made to feel very welcome, being made to feel very privileged, especially over the, the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, given oodles of responsibilities over a very short space of time which I've had to take on board, learn very quickly and learn from my mistakes but then we, we get through that. Absolutely. Are you supported with that Adam? Sorry? Are you supported with those things? Oh 100% yeah there's been plenty of training. Um, it, it's, it's, it's been available when, when I need it basically. If I need training on a specific area or a specific subject, all I've got to do is ask. And I'm, I'm never made to feel uh, inferior or stupid if I don't know the, know, know the right answers. All I need to do is ask the right questions and I'll get the right answers. So it's, it's been, been fantastic. Um, prior to the pandemic, I was um, facilitating a 12-step recovery in the steps Ritz course. Um, I sort of jumped into that and embraced it with open arms, more or less from the from the word go. Yeah. Uh, having a uh, having a little bit of background from of facilitating groups uh, and management meetings and, and whatnot, I felt that I was quite natural to, to stand up in front of the group and um, not necessarily teach, but um, plant seeds, draw diagrams discuss things and get people to open up and start engaging. Um, when the pandemic pandemic hit us, yeah. I then had to think of ways in which we could sort of try and keep this this flourishing group this flourishing group keep going. So we, we come up well all of the groups now are, are all on Microsoft Teams, they're all online and I've managed to keep this flowing through through the use of th this uh, this application and, and do it from this room in here and it's been been fantastic 
That's great stuff because you, you know there's been a lot of changes during the pandemic, hasn't there? And actually, you, you know, everyone going online with groups and things has been uh, a challenge. And you, you know, yourself, you've embraced that as well, and um, which has been really nice to watch. Um, Adam, thank you very much for your time today. Um, really appreciate it, and uh, I look forward to seeing where you go next on your journey. Thank you, Tony. All right. <laughs> Bye. Bye. That was great, Adam and Tony, thank you. We'd now like to share a video by Tony and Gary Hutchins who is going to talk about the Service User Representative and Volunteer Programme in Inclusion Services. So, hello and welcome. I'm Tony Burkett. I'm the Volunteer Coordinator and Service User Rep Lead for Inclusion Isle of Wight. And today I'm joined by Gary Hutchins who is the Service Manager from the Isle of Wight Inclusion Hub. Um, and he's here to talk a little bit about the volunteers and service user reps. Morning, Gary. Good morning, Tony. <laughs> okay, so um, how do you feel the service user rep and volunteer program benefits the service users and our service? So, two pretty different things, obviously, because to be a service user rep, you sort of need to have been quite uh, definitely in touch with the services as a service user. Um, and, and, you know, in the volunteer program, you've, you've got people that come through with lived experience and people that don't come through with lived experience. Um, but uh, it's massively important on, on both ends, really, because uh, obviously the, the, the services we provide, especially at the moment during the, the COVID pand pandemic, have got to be relevant to people. They've got to be accessible. We need to be offering be as creative as we can be in terms of offering um, interventions and services and um, and, and uh, <laughs> make sure it's something that people want. Um, and the only way to do that is through service user feedback. Um, so that's massively important um, in uh, for, for, for us um, to, to make sure we're getting things right and tweaking things and stopping doing things that aren't working as well, because obviously it's a waste of our resources too. So. Um, you know, and the best way of doing that is for getting feedback from the people that are using the services or, or, or would like to use the services. So um, good and bad feedback is always good. Um, and it's really brilliant, especially on the island, because we've always got brilliant representation um, at the National Service User Forum. And if, if, if norm, normally somebody from the Isle of Wight there. Um, uh, so uh, at least one person. So uh, we're really well represented, and um, and and uh, that's something this organisation really values, and that's one thing I love about this organisation. Yes, yeah, so that's great stuff. Thank you, Gary. And, um, and could, would you mind discussing the importance, how you feel, of the service user rep and volunteer roles, and also like the sort of impact that they have on our service user and our service. Um, yeah, so, so that was the service user uh, user representative stuff. In terms of the volunteer program, the volunteer program is massively important for a number of reasons. Um, firstly, um, that you know gives the opportunity to to people to take part in the service. Um, you know that our, our service is a community service, and 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 belongs to the community. Um, and and people from all over the community can can be part of our volunteer program. Obviously, everyone's DBS at the beginning, so we make sure it's safe. Um, we make sure the governance is really, really solid around it because we want our volunteers to be able to really contribute rather than be a tick box exercise of some kind. Um, so, uh, as I mentioned before, it's really important we got people that, that have come through the service in terms of treatment and their treatment journeys um, and other people from that can offer something else from, from the community or just want to know more about our service, whether that's with the young people service, the adult service or the, the family and carers part of our service. Um, it's all really important and everyone brings, everyone within our team brings something different and that's something of value and that's exactly, you know, I think we've got 22 volunteers now on, on the island um, and uh, we've had uh, eight people now that have worked since December 2018 that have worked through the volunteer programme and paid work now with us. So that's massively important in terms of um, the, the way we work that it, with uh, having lived experience for the service just to see especially on somewhere like the Isle of Wight where whereby a lot of people know each other um, and used each with each other drank with each other and if you can see that progression every time they come into our service of somebody that's actually 
taken the opportunity um, to with some of the treatment options we've got and, and moved on and through. Um, that's massively inspirational, um, and and it's um, and also it's infectious for the the, the staff team as well um, to to see that and feel that and that energy and that enthusiasm that comes with that. Um, it's it's an important part sometimes as someone's service that someone's treatment journey as well because. Um, it's something we can offer in terms of occupation, which is massively important, as you know, in in recovery. Um, in, you know, filling that time that drugs and alcohol leave um, when people sort of progress, um, and uh, uh, and you know, the good thing about our volunteer thing is people people can either do a couple of hours, you know, um, once a week. Um, or you know, can really go at it three full full days a week, and the training and the and the um, uh, the, the support that people get is is really really comprehensive, um, and it's so important as well that like I mentioned about people working on and through and achieving paid work as well because it 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 bolsters us, makes us more resilient because we've got people that know our systems and processes and really come through. Um, like I said, in terms about the inspiration as well, that's massively important for everybody. So the whole thing is like a massive beehive of possibility, positivity um, of people moving up and through and always moving, which is which is also so important. So, yeah, it really, really every on every element of the service, it's um, it's uh, it's it's so important. And there's no coincidence, I don't think, that our performance in terms of people finishing treatment and not coming back into treatment is going like that and improving all the time as our volunteer programs developed um and you've obviously been a big part of that yourself tony in terms of putting that together so it's um yeah massively important and central to everything we do. yeah uh, absolutely so i heard you mention covid so um with, with regards to the the covid pandemic how do you feel the volunteers and service user reps have been able to be involved in that um, and do you feel we've been able to utilise them and they've been able to support us? Yeah, I mean, again, it, it's so important with our, with our volunteer programme that um, that, that uh, we offer opportunities. And that's been a real challenge, hasn't it, uh, through this period, because, um, you know, a lot of the staff team can't come in. So we've had to be really versatile in how we offer the service. There have been some problems in terms of the service user involvement as well, because of the forums that are used for that nationally and digital forums and um, not everyone had the equipment to do that, so we've had to sort of adapt um, and make sure that sort of flow of feedback is is always coming through. Um, so that's been a challenge, but I think we've got there, yeah. um, and and that's that, that's still happening. Um, the volunteers, obviously, it's keeping them, you know, as you as you know yourself, keeping in contact with everybody, making sure people still sort of keeping themselves having the opportunity to train and develop. Um, and um, through virtual forums uh, and team meetings as well. Um, but and then we've got some of the really core volunteers that got to the second or third stage that have been instrumental in keeping us going and being versatile um, through this period because um, it was the the fine balance. Obviously, if anyone had any symptoms, staff or volunteers or service users, they couldn't come into the service. So we've had to, to, to mould ourselves quickly with that. But... Um, some of the core volunteers are really, really progression. It was a big part of their their um, recovery journey as well. We've had to sort of balance out: are they better off not coming in, or better off coming in, um, in terms of the risk there? So, um, I think we've had about five volunteers that have been absolutely central to you know our telephone traffic coming through, having lived experience with people, people that were. I think, it's been a bit of a surprise really you know some of our more complex service users with, with like co-occurring conditions and everything have seemed to have managed well through covid um, yeah. and other people that had that structure and have lost it struggled a little bit more so again that lived experience that people have got on the end of the phone all the time um with the with the enhanced telephone traffic we've had and telephone interventions has been absolutely central to getting our service out and our knowledge and experience and and uh, uh, and and keeping that sort of recovery community together that we've we worked so hard to build. Yeah, absolutely. I agree fully. Gary, thank you so much for that today. Um, uh, really appreciated, and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers, Tony. So we've reached the end of day one. 
Thank you so much to all who contributed to the first day of our celebration week. It would be great if you would encourage people to join us for the rest of the week and share the link with people who haven't been able to attend. Tomorrow we'll be hearing from Jenny Lynch, Involvement Manager, from our Personalisation and Social Inclusion Services, Research and Discharge to Assess team and we'll be hearing more from Inclusion Services Recovery Workers. Please join us again tomorrow to continue our week-long celebration of involvement. Thank you.